Welcome back to our channel. In this festive special episode, we are going to discuss, speak, chant, and explain you the meaning of Shri Ganapati Atharva Shirsha, which is a very powerful prayer chanted. Last year during Ganesh festival, if you remember, we had spoken bits and parts about the Ganpati Atharva Shirsha, and we had also spoken about, about the Ganesh Gayatri Mantra. But in today's episode and in the upcoming ones, this is the first part of the several ones to go in which we are going to talk about the Shri Ganpati Atharva Shirsha. So let us first understand what is Ganpati Atharva Shirsha. Before that, my name is Ashwini Chube. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for watching this video. And if you like this video and if you're looking for more such amazing content, please subscribe to my channel where I will be speaking about more of such content and explaining it to you in simple plain English. So before we begin anything, please take that moment and subscribe to our channel. Okay, now that you are subscribed to our channel, I want to ask you if you have heard about the Ganpati Atharva Shirsh. Every year when during the festival, during the Ganesh festival, it starts on the fourth day of the month of Bhadrapadi, the, the bright half, which is also called as the Shukla Paksha of the month of Bhadrapadi, the fourth day is called as the Ganesh Chaturthi. And from the Ganesh Chaturthi, which is the fourth day, till the eleventh day, which is the Ananta Chaturdashi. So please understand it is Ganesh Chaturthi. Chaturthi means fourth and Chaturdashi means 14th. So the Ganesh festival lasts for 14 days. It is not Ananta Chaturthi, it is Ananta Chaturdashi, the day till which the Ganesh festival lasts. If you chant the Atharva Shirsha daily, it is it brings you a lot of good luck. But apart from just that, uh, just chanting it during the Ganesh festival, the Ganpati Atharva Shirsha can be chanted any time of the day. It's a very powerful mantra. It comes from the Ganesh Upanishad. It is said that if students chant this mantra every day, it can help them in their studies. People who have psychological problems, delusions, running mind, continuous running mind, continuous fear, anxiety, Shri Ganpati Atharva Shirsha is supposed to bring in peace, sense of tranquility. It is a very powerful mantra which can help you get over psychological problems. The reason being the the Ganpati Mantra helps you balance your Mooladhara or your basic chakra which lies at the base of your spine. Mooladhara chakra is the chakra of stability. People who have issues with finances, with money, with stability are said to have a weak Mooladhara chakra and chanting any Ganesh Mantra can help you make your Mooladhara chakra stronger. But more than that, more than any of the chants, Shri Ganpati Atharva Shirsha is one of the most powerful and the most strongest chants known to humans. I have started chanting Shri Ganpati Atharva Shirsha from the age of about 4 or 5 when my grandfather taught me and since then I never stopped. Every year we celebrate Ganpati festival by chanting the Ganesh Atharva Shirsha in our community with all our friends and family. So let us begin with the first part of Shri Ganpati Atharva Shirsha. So let us begin chanting the very first part of Shri Ganesh Atharva Shirsha. Om Namaste Ganapati, which means salutations to you, Lord Ganpati or Lord Ganesh. Then we begin with the most beautiful part of this Atharva Shirsha, which says, Tvameva Pratyaksham Tattvamasi, Tvameva Kevalam Kartasi, Tvameva Kevalam Dhartasi, Tvameva Kevalam Hartasi, Tvameva Sarvam Khalvidam Brahmasi. Let us now understand the meaning of this. Have you heard the words Tattvamasi? Many spiritual teachers use the word Tattvamasi in their work. Consciousness, which is the essence of this universe, which is the essence of everything. So understand consciousness is awareness of everything 
and judgment of nothing which means you are aware of what's happening around you but you are not in a position to put it as good bad right wrong anything of that sort and that's why consciousness exists everywhere lord ganesh is the consciousness existing a lot of people ask me that when we speak about consciousness what is it consciousness is everything and everywhere and hence here when we speak about lord ganesh in the atharvashisha we say that you are indeed the consciousness essence underlying everything and everywhere that's why we say tvameva pratyaksham tatvamasi tvameva kevalam kartasi karta means creator so you are the creator with whose power the whole universe is operating tvameva kevalam dhartasi tvameva kevalam hartasi now here it means the sustainer and the destroyer please understand the energy of lord ganesh we are right now if let us for for a moment forget about everything and look at the essence of energy where we speak about lord ganesh as the essence of everything he is the creator he is the destroyer so there are mythological tales which say that when lord ganesh was born when the elephant headed lord ganesh was born all the supreme deities gave him their power which included the abundance from goddess lakshmi which included the energy of all uh, mother goddess saraswati's wisdom and lakshmi's abundance and of course because he is the son of shiva and parvati he is the yin yang balanced god of everything and hence he is the beginning of everything so when we say tvameva kevalam hartasi tvameva kevalam dhartasi which itself means the power of the sustainer so karta dharta and harta means the creator the sustainer and the destroyer which is what we call as the brahma vishnu mahesh the, trin the trinity of hindu gods but lord ganesh is everything encompassed and that's why he is he is the consciousness visible to us so tvameva kevalam kartasi tvameva kevalam dhartasi tvameva kevalam hartasi is all about the creation sustenance and destruction you are indeed all of this tvameva sarvam khalvidam brahmasi which actually means you are everything all of this put together tvam sakshat atmasi nityam you are the visible atman or what we call as the soul the essence of everything the essence of all this reality so this very first stanza talks about shri ganesh in his all glory in his various forms let us now go to the next part rutam vachmi satyam vachmi what do you mean by rutam vachmi satyam vachmi here we are talking about the divine law which is the rutam and satyam vachmi which is what we call as the truth or absolute reality the underlying consciousness which we are we are talking about the absolute consciousness which is all about in the universe is nothing but what we call as lord ganpati the next one says avatvam mam avavaktaram avashrotaram avadhataram avadhataram avachanucha avanucha nabavashishyam which means here it is all about protecting now lord ganesh here is said to protect the the person who is listening to this eternal truth protecting the person who is reciting this the speaker the listener the giver as well as the sustainer and when we say avavaktaram avashrotaram avadataram avadhataram avanuchanam avashishyam we are talking about protecting the disciple who recites this truth and lives with the truth so that was about protecting now we end end this last stanza saying avanucha namo shishyam which means protecting the disciple let us go to the next part ava purastat ava dakshinatat ava paschatat ava uttaratat ava chordhvatat ava dharatat sarvatomam pahi pahi samantat here we are referring to the directions a lot of us when we work with energy now 
when we work uh, at at reiki level 3 which is the masters level where we ask when we when we tell our students um to create a circle of energy around them we look at all directions and here we are asking your this particular stanza of the ganesh atharva shirsha says protecting this truth from all directions so the east we always begin with the east even when we do um, angelic healing and when we ask to invoke the angelic energies we always begin with the east and this all is um, the origin of all of this begins in the beauty of um, beauty of all the chants which we have used always in sanskrit because as i always say hinduism is not a religion it's a way of life it's a way of wisdom and hence that's the reason um what we begin as the old religion we start with everything from the east so when i say ava purastat ava dakshinatat ava paschatat ava uttaratat ava chordvatat ava dharatat सर्वतोमां पाही पाही समंतात वी बिगिन विद द ईस्ट द साउथ द वेस्ट एंड द नॉर्थ देन वी आल्सो स्पीक अबाउट द टॉप एंड द बॉटम एंड प्लीज प्रोटेक्ट मी प्लीज प्रोटेक्ट दिस ट्रूथ व्हिच आई डिक्लेअर फ्रॉम ऑल साइड्स दैट्स व्हाई वी आर सेइंग सर्वतोमां पाही पाही समंतात व्हिच मींस फ्रॉम ऑल डायरेक्शंस लेट अस गो टू द नेक्स्ट वन वं वांगमयस्त्वम चिन्मया त्वम आनंदमयस्त्वम ब्रह्मया त्वम सच्चिदानंदात द्वितीयोसी तम प्रत्यक्ष ब्रह्मासी तम ज्ञानमयो विज्ञानमयो नाउ वांगमय व्हिच मींस वर्ड्स सो यू आर द नेचर ऑफ यू आर द नेचर ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस चिन्मया व्हिच इज द सोर्स ऑफ ऑल ऑफ दिस आनंदमय द ब्लिस इफ इफ यू हर्ड अबाउट द कोशास द बिगेस्ट एंड द मोस्ट एडवांस्ड कोश और द लेयर इज द आनंदमय कोश so tvam anandamaya tvam brahmamaya which means you are the nature of bliss of joy you are the nature of the brahman which is the source of bliss satchidanand which means the existence of consciousness and bliss sat chit anand three words put together so here we speak about tvam sat tvam tvam satchidan tvam तम वांगमयस्तम चिन्मया तम आनंदमयस्तम ब्रह्ममया तम सच्चिदानंदा द्वितीयोसि तम प्रत्यक्षम ब्रह्मासि यू आर द ब्रह्मन द एक्झिस्टिंग द ट्रुथ द स्टेट ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस तम ज्ञानमयो विज्ञानमयो सो हियर वी आर अगेन टॉकिंग अबाउट द ज्ञान एंड विज्ञान व्हिच आर आल्सो इंपॉर्टेंट कोशास इन द ज्ञानमय विज्ञानमय कोश एंड हियर वी आस्क हियर वी आर स्पीकिंग ऑफ लॉर्ड गणेश as the nature of gnana that is spiritual spiritual knowledge and vidnana that is the spiritual vision vision of the greater greatest consciousness tvam gnanamayo vidnanamayo i am trying to make it as simple as i can we'll ju- just just go with the last discussion of today and the next part we will discuss in the next episode sarvam jagaridam tatto jayate sarvam jagaridam tattas tishtati svarvam jagaridam vailayam ishati सर्वम जगदिदम तो ही प्रत्येति व्हिच मींस द एंटायर यूनिवर्स हैज मैनिफेस्टेड फ्रॉम यू द एंटायर यूनिवर्स सर्वम जगदिदम इज द एंटायर यूनिवर्स व्हिच इज सस्टेन्ड बाय योर पावर सर्वम जगदिदम तो ही लयम ईश्यति एंड सर्वम जगदिदम तो ही प्रत्येति आर आर टू सेंटेंसेस व्हिच से द एंटायर यूनिवर्स डिसॉल्व्स इन यू एंड द एंटायर यूनिवर्स विल दस फाइनली रिटर्न टू यू वी हैज we as humans we are living in a human body which is nothing but pancha mahabhuta which is the spirit the air the fire the water and the earth we are made of the five elements we are born from the elements we go back to the element and your lord ganesh is what we are talking about everything being right from the beginning to the end and that's why the next stanza which is the last part of today tvam bhumi rapo nalo nilo naba tvam chatvari vak padan which means bhumi earth aap water nal anala fire 
अनिला विंड नभा स्काय और ईथर तुम भूमि रापो नलो नीलो नभा तुम चतवारी वाक पदानी which is the four types of speech now this is interesting this is my personal favorite which says which are the four types of speech the para pashyanti madhyama vaikhari para is which begins at your muladhara at your root chakra it is that kind of speech which has which is existing in the basic level of the basic chakra the next one which is pashyanti it's where the speech starts coming from your muladhara coming slowly up to you to your anahata chakra which is your heart chakra and from there it becomes madhyama madhyama is where we get clarity of the speech now the thoughts which we have in our mind before we speak it up but which are still clear within us are madhyama and vaikhari vani is nothing but when we speak it out through our kantha chakra through our vishuddhi which comes out from your from your mouth which you speak out so if you look at the four levels of speech if you look at it from the up to down approach i would say we begin with the vaikhari which we are speaking but before we speak there is a level of thought going on what am i going to speak up is where the madhyama speech is is very much there the pashyanti is before it becomes a thought but there is some clarity happening within you and para is completely where there is where you are not aware of what the thoughts are. so that's for today we begin with the first part of the ganpati atharva shirsha in the next episode we will speak about the guna traya tita avastha traya tita and so on i hope this part of the shri ganesh atharva shirsha is making sense to you i hope you can learn something from this i always believe that when children learn if you have kids please make them recite the stotra and also the atharva shirsha and also make sure that you explain them the meaning because children pick up very fast and always remember sanskrit is a language of vibrations so when you do the chanting it opens you up it opens your energy body a lot of people have been um, telling me of late that their mental health is not good and if they could do any practices any affirmations and i always say that affirmations in sanskrit or are more powerful and that's why please do the chantings it will really help you move your energy and teach your children they will pick up very fast i will see you in the next episode where we will take you to the next part of atharva shirsha till then thank you om gam ganpatiye namaha Have a great Ganesh festival. Bye bye.